I'm like a little kid today on Christmas Day. Hey guys, how you doing? It's Kev Tech here, bringing you another video on information technology. I hope you're having a good day. Happy Saturday, and the reason why I'm super excited is because today I'm gonna go over remote products that you would use as remote assistant tools. So I'm gonna go over remote assistant tools and products that you normally would use as IT support, desktop support, technical support, just some apps that you should be familiar with if you're helping people remotely. And the reason why I'm going over it is because a lot of the companies are working remotely now and you need to be familiar with some of these apps. So before I go over this, um, if you're new to my channel, I do IT videos, I do IT support videos, I do CompTIA videos. I talk about how to get into desktop support, technical support, IT support. I also do job interviews as well when I help people get into IT. So as always, rate, comment, subscribe, give me, the, give me that thumbs up, hit the notification bell, that way you know when I go live. And um, that's about it, let's get right into this. So I. I downloaded a few different applications today because I wanted I, I got a trial version of certain applications, and these certain these apps that I'm gonna go over are some apps that you might see in in a real world real life environment in your job. These are remote applications that you need to be familiar with. So, one by one, I'm gonna go over all of them, and then if you have any questions, if you have any questions, leave it below in the comment below, and I'll be more than happy to answer and get back to you. All right. So, let me share my screen with you. Uh, let's do screen one. All right, screen one is sharing right now. Hopefully, you should see everything. All right, so I'm on screen one. I'm gonna go over, let's go over Team Viewer first. So Team Viewer is an application that um, they have a free trial version, but some companies use it as well. So how it works is basically, uh, you have your own ID, you have your own password. Um, you have them downloaded and then they'll get a partner ID or some sort of ID. Just like you have an ID right here, they will get an ID. So then they give you the ID and then you hit connect. That's, that's basically what it is. It's nothing complicated about that. So if you want, if you want to get into someone's machine, you actually have to get it some sort of number or some sort of ID. Um, you know, obviously this isn't going to work on this, but basically you get the ID and you hit connect. Um, I'm not a fan of Team Viewer. I'm just letting you know right now, this is not the best app that I, I would recommend as far as doing a screen share is concerned. I would not like to use this. It's not secure. It's been hacked before and a lot of people are not fans of it. But if you, have, you don't have anything else you could use and you want to get into someone's machine, I definitely recommend giving it a go, if that makes sense. All right, so I'm going to close out of that. The next one that you should be familiar with um, it's AnyDesk. You guys probably don't know what this is, but it's a, it's a free app. It's a free application as well. So this this is an app that's called AnyDesk, and basically it gives you a number. Um, you can install this on your computer, and you can install it on another computer. Basically, you put the the address of the computer, and then you hit connect. So depending on the computer you have, you just you basically you put the the address of the remote desk you like to access. So what does that mean? Like if you click on it and it, it tells you more about it. So it tells you how to connect to it. So basically alias address label and you request a session with him. Um, and then you, you're you basically you're allowed to get into it. So, you, so this is supported for Windows, Mac, Linux, Android, iOS, and Chrome OS. So basically you just, you just put the information in. It might be like their email address or it might be the name of the host name of the computer. Like, so whatever the name of the host name is of the computer, you're able to get into that machine. And that's basically what it is. And then you hit connect and then you basically have a full screen and then you could just take control of the whole screen basically and do whatever you want. So this is something that I recommend you use if you, if you have no other application you could use. Um, if you're like me, that, that our company doesn't have any type of team sharing application, and they don't share anything at all, for some weird reason, they don't have any of that, then I recommend using this. This will help you. This will also show you what they're seeing on their screen, and basically you could do whatever you want with this, which is kinda, kinda cool, I, obviously. Um, definitely recommend it. This is something that, that I, I used before in the past when I, when I had my first job, one of my first IT jobs, and I didn't have an application that I would use for screen share. I didn't know what to use. So then somebody recommended me to download AnyDesk and I don't even know what that was. So then I downloaded this and I figured you put the address book with the name of the computer here and hit connect and I didn't know about this. And then basically it's absolutely free. You could download it. You can buy a license if you like as well. 
Um, the, the license is not that expensive. I checked online. And basically, you, you could connect to any machine. And some, some companies use this. You'd be surprised some companies will use this. Um, this is a really good application. It's not crappy or anything. I think this is better. I prefer this over TeamViewer. I'm not, too, not, not, not trying to strike down TeamViewer, but this is better than TeamViewer. All right, I'm going to get out of this. Uh, yes, get out of this. You like to install any desk now? Oh, it actually allows me to download it. Uh, and I'll do it later. All right, so the next one is BombGuard, which a lot of people might be familiar with. So with BombGuard is, I'm already logged into it. You have to have your own username and password. I'm logged in. Um, if you want, if you if you want someone to get into your get, you want to get into someone's machine, you give them the website. So you you gotta have your unique website, like whatever name of your company is. Mine is trial and then basically you give them a a, a session key. So if you want to see you want to see it live in action, basically you go into your web browser, right? Go to trial. If I can spell right, dot bombguard. Dot com. This is a trial account. Give give me a session key and oh my session key is. Can can I get a session key, please? So you basically you're on the phone with someone and I. I'll give you a session key. Are you ready to connect to your machine? You're ready for me to connect to me? Yeah, sure. Uh, nine, six, five, seven, seven, six, nine. So you put that session key in there and it seems like it kind of not added. My keyboard flew out of the, out of that section. All right. So then you have it now on the screen, you hit submit. It's going to make you download a file. It's going to make you run the file. And then basically, it's trying to do a screen share between you and the other the other person. And then it says, "You want to? Are, are, you're gonna take control of your screen. Are you okay with that? Are you cool with that?" I'm like, yeah, yeah, I'm okay with that. I'm okay. I'm okay with that. So then, once you do that, right? Once you do that, now you have the you have control of the screen. So then, basically, you you click on it, you hit accept session, and then you hit allow because he wants to get on your screen, and that's it. And then you basically you're on their screen. So that's a pretty, it's a pretty cool app. Um, you can invite representatives if you like. So if you want, if you have someone else who's logged into the console of BombGuard, you can invite them to, so they could see what you're seeing. So say for example, you're having an issue and you don't know how to fix it, but you have another friend of yours that is using BombGuard as well. And you want them to see what you're seeing. You could share your screen with them and then they could see this as well. So this is a good application. You could do control delete. Um, you could lock the computer. You could shut it down. You could also do file transfer protocol. So if you want to transfer certain files on their computer, you could do it from here and basically move files back and forth. You could do command lines as well and mess with the system registry. And then once you end the session, um, it'll go back to normal. The whole screen will go back to normal. So, and then, and then we'll say something like, depending on how you have it set up, it will say something like, thank you for, thank you for uh, accepting my screen share, blah, blah, blah. Your screen share is, has ended. The computer is no longer being accessed or controlled by the BombGuard representative, blah, blah, blah. And that's it. It's basically what it is. So this is something that you, I think you, everyone should at least understand what this is. A lot of companies use this, just letting you guys know. I'm going to close out of this. Um, the next one you should be uh, uh, familiar with is um, LogMeIn. So I'm going to open up LogMeIn control panel. It lets me open it up. Uh, this is not the right one. There we go. I opened it just now. So log me in is right over here. Basically, you add the application to a computer, and then you could do remote control, and then you could take control of the computer, um, and then basically. You want to add the, you know, you're going to add their information in here and you hit OK. And then let's say you can log in and all that. I'm not going to do that right now, obviously, but you can take control of the whole screen. So logging me in is the same thing. It's, it's almost similar to a bum guard, which is kind of cool. But you could basically add as many computers as you possibly can. You share the link with that computer. You copy it and put it on. You, you install the client on their computer and then you have control of their machine. So some companies will use this. I'm just letting you know. So this is another app that you will see in your environment if you work IT support. 
last but not least, um, I'm going to go over one more. Uh, Dameware. So you guys probably don't know what Dameware is. So there's Dameware Remote Support Tool. And in Dameware, basically, um, you, can put the, you put the IP address and you hit OK, and then that's it. And you're able to get into the machine. So there's actually remote control. This, this is, this is, there's different ones. So it's, uh, it's Billy. I believe it's this one. Yeah, there we go. And then you put the IP address, 10 dot whatever. 10 dot, it's just, it's just saying a hypothetical example. 10.1.2.20, right? And then if you're an admin, you have to put your user ID. So you put your admin ID, your admin password, and your admin domain credentials, and then you hit connect. And then you get into their computer, and then you're able to take control of their computer. So this is something that you might use in your environment. I don't know. I can't answer this question for you because I don't know if they're going to use this, but some companies will require you to use this, and you put the username, the password, your domain, and then you connect to their computer and then you take control of their computer and you're able to do whatever you want to do on their computer. Um, obviously you do the IP address or you do the host name or the domain name server or, or if, if for whatever reason they're on VPN, you have to get a different IP address because VPN changes the IP address and you might have to get the, the IP address of the VPN client. So then you're able to connect to their computer because the IP address changes when you're using VPN it creates a tunnel and you, you don't get a 10.1, you get something different depending on how, you know, the environment is set up. So basically that's what it is. So, and that's pretty much it. That's all the applications you might use in the work environment. I mean, there's other, there's other apps as well I could go over. I'm not gonna go over. I'm just gonna go, I'm going over the common ones that I have seen. Obviously there are other different ones that, that people might see or might not see. Um, if you like this video, as always, rate, comment, subscribe, we greatly appreciate it. Um, give me a thumbs up, greatly appreciate it. And, and this video is to help people that are trying to do IT support or trying to understand remote desktop applications. So with that being said, I hope you guys have a great day um, and take care. Have a good one. Peace.